Okay, so we've just worked through two very detailed examples of finding the total response of a system. It involves a lot of computations, a lot of steps, but just uh, go through things methodically, and it's not too bad. wanted to turn attention to kind of a special case that often uh, makes things much simpler if certain conditions are met. So let's talk about the response of an LTI system. So remember, LTI is linear time invariant. For the special case where the input is e to the st. So we're going to restrict ourselves to inputs of the form e to the st. One thing that's nice about this is what happens is the output due to e to the st is itself e to the st just multiplied by a number. So I guess what I'm saying here is that if you're lucky enough to have an input that has this form, you really don't have to do convolution in your zero state response computation because you know that the output is going to be the input just multiplied by a number. So let's talk through that a little bit more carefully. Normally what we would do, given the input e to the st, is we would convolve it with the impulse response to get the output y of t. So let's actually just go ahead and do the math, okay? So by definition, the convolution integral is this right here. So I've replaced h of t with h of tau, and then I replace e to the st, I replace the t's with t minus tau. So that's just how we do convolution. I can split the exponential here into e to the st times e to the minus s tau. And then at that point, e to the st is a constant. I can pull it outside of the integral. And I'm left with this quantity right here. Why did I do that? Well, again, what I'm trying to show is that when I have an input of the form e to the st, what comes out is e to the st times a number. Well, here is the number. Here is e to the st. So I'm going to go ahead and define this quantity right here as a special quantity that we're going to call h of s. Later on in the class, when we get to talking about Laplace transforms, we'll see that this is really just the Laplace transform of the impulse response quantified in the s domain as h of s. For now, we're going to think of it as if I know what s is, so maybe I've got e to the 3t or e to the minus 2t, so I know what value s is, or maybe it's even complex, right? Maybe s is 1 plus 2j, right? If I know what s is, this right here just gives me a number. It evaluates to just some scalar quantity. It could be complex, but it's just a number. So when I'm all said and done, what happens is my output is just my input e to the st times this number h of s. So again, just recapping, in general, to find the output of a, an at-rest system, we do convolution. And that convolution can sometimes be kind of tedious. If we're lucky enough to have an input that has this special form e to the st, computing the output is pretty easy. We can just write down e to the st, and all we have to do is figure out what is h of s. So again, like I said, this quantity h of s is what we call the transfer function of the system. And in general, we can write it down just by inspection. So here's how we actually compute it. We can actually write down h of s by just examining the polynomials in our differential equation. Remember, q of s is what multiplies y of t's, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, not q of s, but q of d. So examining our differential equation, on the left we had q, and on the right we had the polynomial p of d. So this equation right here says that I can just write down h of s just by inspection. All I need to be able to do is identify the polynomial qd, the polynomial pd, and then replace all the d's with s's, take their ratio, and then plug in the specific value for s that I'm working with to get a number. That, in general, to me anyway, is much simpler than having to do convolution. So for this special case, using the transfer function concept is often the easier way to do things. Like I noted just a second ago, we'll later learn really what this h of s quantity is, and it's really the Laplace transform of the impulse response. So once we get into Laplace domain analysis, we'll definitely revisit this concept of the transfer function. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and work some examples. So given some systems described by a differential equation, we'll actually figure out how to compute the transfer function. And then also for the systems, given an input of the form e to the st, we'll compute the output of the system at rest due to that input by using the transfer function and avoiding convolution.